welcome back. We already have two lectures on this topic of supply chain analytics. The first lecture helped us to understand the basic principles of supply chain management. We discussed the importance of supply chain in the current business scenario and in the second lecture we started that how supply chain has evolved over last 100 years and then we also discuss the use of analytics in supply chain decision making that what are the current challenges of supply chain management and how analytics can be very handy for improving those challenges to solve those challenges and in today's discussion we will further like to elaborate on those very aspects of uh, using data, using data driven decision making for the supply chain decisions or various levels of supply chain. Just to recapsulate whatever we have discussed in our earlier two lectures, we discussed that supply chain starts from vendors on one side, then there is a manufacturer and then you have distribution till consumer uses those product. And we also emphasized that uh, nowadays it is more supply network and supply wave these type of terms are more popular. The reason being when we talk of chain it is more like a linear phenomena, but when we see that at each stage of chain there are so many entities which are involved and therefore, it is more appropriate to say that it is now supply network or supply wave. And now moving further into the discussion that uh, we discussed about uh, the initial idea of supply chain which started from Ford Motor Company which used to control the mining of iron ore on one side and distribution of finished car on the other side. So, a very integrated supply chain was conceptualized by Ford Motor Company and uh, because of this high level of integration, this supply chain was very much efficient, but at the same time the problem was lack of flexibility. As we discussed in our second lecture that it is more popular with the name of supply chain supplying only black and T model of cars. Then we discussed about Toyota concept where Toyota developed a pool of vendors and started incorporating flexibility into the supply chain. And uh, over a period of time most of other industries may be electronics, may be consumer durables, may be even FMCGs all these types of industrial segments started adopting Toyota model of supply chain. Late in the 20th century or in the beginning of 21st century, we have this IT revolution and as a result of this IT revolution, we have another very important revolution in the development of supply chain phenomena. And this model is characterized as we discuss with the name of Dell company. The Dell used power of information technology for delivering their products in a highly customized fashion. And uh, this model of supply chain became very popular model because of competition, because of uh, increasing expectations of the customer. Now, we need very specified customized products and through the power of IT. Dell was able to deliver a high degree of customized products to its customer. So, that is the latest phenomena. Now, in last two decades, there are very rapid changes which are happening in the business environment and at the same time, there are rapid changes which are happening in the technological environment also. When I am talking of technological, so my focus is more on the information technology. And now, the current wave of supply chain development is integrating both these things. It is integrating the development of supply chain management 
as a concept, as a theory, as a practice and on the other side it is taking care of development of information technology, data management techniques and now this supply chain analytics will provide a very good platform where we are going to use both these technologies, both these concepts for solving some of the challenges which we discussed in our lecture number 2. We will like to uh, recapsulate all those challenges in today's lecture also. So, just to give you the summary of uh, whatever we discuss in lecture number 2 regarding supply chain analytics. So, supply chain analytics plays a very key role in enhancing the performance of supply chain by improving supply chain visibility. You see these three important uh, activities we expect from supply chain analytics. One is the visibility. Now, the visibility is very important because of uh, customer experience. There was a time when we used to send a letter in the post office and uh, it was like a black box that you just put a letter whether it is a registered letter in the post office and you do not know at what time your letter will be delivered to the receiver. But nowadays you have a tracking number available with you and continuously on internet on the given portal you can put that tracking number to track the movement of that uh, letter that packet. Large number of courier companies are putting RFID tags in the packets so that the online movement of those packets can be tracked and accordingly customer is having a better experience about those products. And in variety of critical items like uh, if I talk of disaster supply chain, if I talk of medicines, if I talk of some emergency equipments, the supply chain visibility becomes very, very important. In almost all e-commerce sites, whenever we purchase a product, we get a portal number, a document number and through that document number, you can always see, you can always have this visibility component satisfied that where is the location of your order number. So, this supply chain visibility is a very, very new and interesting area to give you a better customer experience. The second is volatility, managing unprecedented changes in the supply chain and for that purpose, the supply chain of previous years, supply chain of fold time may not be suitable in present context. So, we need more flexible supply chains to handle issues like volatility and uh, flexibility can be provided with the tools like supply chain analytics. So, we will see that how real time data availability can help us to inculcate more flexibility into the supply chain. That is what we mean with managing these disruptions and then reducing fluctuations in the cost. Yesterday in our lecture number 2, we discussed that uh, there are issues related to frequent stock outs or issues related to access inventories in the supply chain. All these things create fluctuations in the cost of offering a product to the customer. If I go for the sake of flexibility, too much changes of my production system, all these things will lead to fluctuations in the cost. So, I certainly need to be very careful that there should not be too much fluctuations in the cost, because ultimately if uh, there is too much fluctuations in the cost, I cannot have a good idea about the profitability of my overall supply chain. So, these three important issues are there which uh, we will like to uh, develop with the help of uh, supply chain analytics. So, visibility of global supply chain and logistics process that is certainly one area which uh, we will like to work on. The second is 
to manage the demand flexibility as uh, we discussed yesterday also. So, we need to manage this uh, demand with respect to varieties also, new type of products, more designs, more variations are required by the customer and at the same time you do not know what quantities a customer may require all of a sudden. Sometime in some products like if I talk of salt, so you have a very steady demand pattern of salt. But when Apple launches iPhone 7, so Apple does not have any idea that on day 1 what will be the demand of this iPhone 7. So, handling products like iPhone 7 versus handling products like a routine salt requires two different types of supply chain strategies and uh, as you move towards new automobile products, as you move towards uh, new electronic products, as you move towards new type of uh, consumer durables because uh, when we are discussing this supply chain analytics at the same time you all know that uh, there is lot of emphasis on innovation and when innovation is coming into the new product development, uh, this problem of uh, demand uncertainty, this problem of demand uncertainty further increases and uh, for that purpose our supply chain need to be very responsive. If our supply chain is not responsive, if our supply chain cannot uh, provide immediate solutions for these changes in the demand, probably we will be uh, behind the race, we will not be able to compete with uh, the most uh, competitive organization. So, this managing the changes in the demand, managing the fluctuations of the demand that is also very, very important. And third issue is how do we manage the fluctuations with respect to cost in the supply chain. There are uh, two very important types of cost which we talk in supply chain anytime and uh, these two types of cost include the fixed cost and then variable cost. In a supply chain, we always try to minimize the combination of fixed and variable cost. You need to design, you need to develop your supply chain processes in such a fashion that uh, you actually get finally the minimum of fixed and variable cost. Fixed cost is that cost which is independent of units, that is independent of units and the variable cost is proportional of units. So, you need to do a proper exercise, you need to do a proper decision making so that uh, you have minimum of fixed and variable cost and for that purpose again analytics will be a very handy tool that uh, will help us to optimize the cost structure of my supply chain. So, these are three important issues and let us see that how analytics in supply chain will help us in addressing these three important issues of supply chain visibility, demand flexibility and reducing the cost of fluctuations in our supply chain. So, let us see that first is we need to move to a smarter logistics to improve supply chain visibility. We need to move into the direction of a smarter logistics. So far, this term smarter was not there. So far, in our logistics practice, it is simply logistics for supply chain. We used to say in our conventional supply chain classes that we need to have a robust efficient effective logistic system for supply chain management. But nowadays because we are talking of supply chain visibility, so we are moving towards smarter logistics and for this purpose of smarter, what is the meaning of this smarter? The meaning of smarter here is 
वेयर माय सप्लाई चेन कैन टेक डिसीजंस ऑन इट्स ओन आई नीड टू बिल्ड दैट टाइप ऑफ डेटा दैट टाइप ऑफ सेंसर्स दैट टाइप ऑफ ऑब्जेक्टिव्स दैट सप्लाई चेन कैन टेक डिसीजंस ऑन इट्स ओन फॉर इंप्रूविंग द बेटर विजिबिलिटी ऑफ माय सप्लाई चेन ऑब्जेक्ट्स सो दैट कंपोनेंट ऑफ डेवलपिंग द स्मार्टर लॉजिस्टिक्स is related to data driven decision making and analytics will be directly related to make my supply chain a smarter supply chains then second is to manage the uncertainty of demand now to manage the uncertainty of demand the only solution available to us is to have a very effective efficient inventory management but if it is not effective if it is not efficient so inventory management or inventory particularly can be a disaster also in most of the supply chain we at the end of the day find that because of improper inventory management the cost of supply chain has increased tremendously and the dead weight the dead weight of inventory has eaten up the entire profitability of your supply chain so we need to find better ways of inventory management which are leading to customer satisfaction because uh, for the sake of uh, good inventory management if you are going for uh, very less safety stocks then probably you can end up with stock out situations also so that is also not desirable so for that purpose we need to have a smart inventory management where you can take decisions on inventory management on the real time databases real time databases means normally we in a conventional system follow p or q type of inventory management either we have a fixed period of review that after every uh, one week or every two week we are going to review the inventory position or we on a certain basis we have a fixed quantity of uh, uh, order and that keeps on going after reaching the reorder point so whenever we reach that reorder point we give order of a fresh quantity so that our stocks are replenished but in both these situations we are either facing the problem of stock outs or we are facing the problem of excess inventory both are not desirable and at the same time we are also facing the problem of uh, uh, this uh, uncertainty in our demand particularly so we need to have more real time data analysis for our inventory management and again analytics will be very much useful for achieving this objective of uh, uh, real time inventory management where as soon as any item is taken away from your stocks so that data is captured and that data is flown in the entire supply chain so in our technical term we say that point of sales data pos we now need to use this pos data for the purpose of inventory management point of sales data and this point of sales data is available simultaneously at all stages of supply chain uh, the supply chain let us have a figure of that first so here my customer is there and uh, some sales is occurring at the customer end now this pos data is generated here and as soon as this data is generated at this customer end customer is going for the purchase at the retailer so he picks up this product so at this retailer inventory is subtracted by one unit if he purchases one ac one refrigerator one color television one mobile so since uh, all parties retailer wholesaler and manufacturer all of them have a integrated system and as soon as customer purchases product from the retailer there is no need to communicate that information separately 
to wholesaler or to manufacturer because it is a continuous integration. So, this data is immediately available to wholesaler and manufacturer and on the basis of this information, basis of uh, these type of data coming from different retailers and different wholesalers, each of these different entities can plan their inventory in the real time environment. So, we want to have more you can say uh, better inventory management, a smarter inventory management uh, with the help of this real time data analysis. So, again that is all about analytics that how do we do this real time data analysis. Then third is this uh, reducing cost fluctuations by optimizing sourcing and logistics activity. Now, you see there are various wholesalers, various retailers at different stages and uh, products are flowing from wholesalers to retailers and with each retailer there are n number of customers also. Now, we need to optimize we need to optimize again with the real time data that from which wholesaler how many products will go to a particular retailer, from which manufacturing facility how many products will go to a particular wholesaler. <coughs> so, that data which is available to us will help us to optimize our sourcing and transportation movement, facility, size related activities. So, analytics will help us in reducing the cost related to sourcing and logistics activity because if we do not do this data driven exercises because uh, uh, we always need to keep this in mind that whenever we talking of analytics it is all about. Uh, uh, data driven analysis, it is data driven decision making, it is data driven implementation. So, everything is data driven. So, all these activities which are most important for the present time, one is for the customer side supply chain visibility type of thing where customer is able to actually continuously track the movement of the packets, the products and on the other side for the company to optimize the availability, to optimize the sourcing, to optimize the cost and all those aspects. So, analytics will help us at all level of supply chain to achieve these three objectives. So, with this now we are very clear I hope that uh, what are the uses of uh, analytics data driven decision making in our supply chain. So, once we are through with this now let us move to some more fundamental issues related to supply chain management. Now, in uh, supply chain as uh, we have discussed yesterday also that uh, data or analytics a very important role at all three levels and three levels are you have the strategic level of supply chain where you design the entire supply chain. Then the second level is the planning level where uh, you plan to implement the strategy and the third level is the operation where you actually execute those plans. So, these are the three phases of the supply chain and uh, the data analytics play important role in the strategic, in the planning and at the operational level of the supply chain. Tactical word is the another word which we use for the planning. So, yesterday if you remember in the lecture we discussed strategic, tactical and operational level. So, tactical and planning are used synonymously and we will be using these two terms interchangeably throughout this course. So, now let us see what are the important activities in these three different phases. So, in the supply chain strategy the designing phase of the supply chain in that we take 
decisions about the structure of the supply chain. The generic supply chains which we discussed in our lecture 1, in that we have uh, some very common type of supply chain designs. So, which particular design is suitable for our type of organization, our type of product, our type of uh, target market, that type of decisions are normally taken, that type of uh, choice of structure is done in case of uh, supply chain strategies. The most important decision is how many intermediaries, how many intermediaries we are going to have, whether there will be a retailer or not, whether there will be a wholesaler or not. These type of decisions are normally the most important decision in case of uh, supply chain strategy. Like we discussed yesterday, the example of Dell, where Dell earlier used to distribute their products through online system and it was, Dell was directly dealing with the customer. So, there was no intermediary between Dell company and the customer, no wholesaler, no retailer. But when Dell changed its supply chain, so we used to say that Dell changed its supply chain strategy and it started using retailers in between. So, that is a type of strategic decision that what is the structure of the supply chain, whether I want to have retailer or I do not want to have retailer. These type of issues are the most important issues uh, with respect to design of a supply chain and therefore, these decisions are taken by the top of the organization those uh, who are uh, maybe the board of directors, CEO, MD, CMD, these type of people, they take the decision with respect to supply chain structure. Then uh, another important strategic decisions are the location and capacity of the facility. I want, now I have decided that I want to have wholesalers and retailers also in my supply chain. Now, whether I want to have a wholesaler in Maharashtra or I want to have a wholesaler in Gujarat or I want to have a wholesaler in Goa, then another wholesaler I want in South India. So, whether to have in Tamil Nadu, whether to have it in Telangana, whether to have it in Andhra Pradesh. So, issues like that. So, where these wholesalers will be and what will be the capacity of these, maybe all these wholesalers because of their further target market may not be of equal capacity. So, a wholesaler in Tamil Nadu may be much bigger than a wholesaler at Goa. Then it is not, out, not about uh, only wholesalers, we take decisions because uh, all these manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers all of them are known as facilities. So, I have to take decision about uh, manufacturers also that where should I have my manufacturing facility, where should I have my wholesalers, where should I have my retailers and uh, what will be the size as I just discussed. So, location and capacities of the facility that is one type of decisions which are the part of my supply chain strategy. Then second important strategic decision is about the products to be made or stored at various locations. You have uh, three manufacturing facility in the country. I have let us say Hero Moto Corp. I am Hito Hero Moto Corp and one of my facility is at Haridwar. One is at Dharu Heda and another is at Gurgaon, which is Gurugram now. Now, I will decide that my Splendor motorcycle will be made at my Dharu Heda plant. My CD 100 motorcycle will be made at Haridwar plant. My scooter pleasure will be made at my Gurugram plant. So, which product to be produced at which facility that is to be decided by again the strategic 
team of the organization. Then another important decision is the modes of transportation. Modes of transportation is another important decision which uh, is uh, again part of strategic decision. Uh, just taking few minutes about modes of transportation. Mode of transportation may include lot of uh, different types of uh, modes are available and uh, many a times we may take decision about multimodal transportation also. So, the conventional systems are road, rail, air, water, pipe, these are our conventional uh, systems, conventional mode of transportation, but uh, many a times we may use a combination of uh, mode of transportation. You must have seen many a times uh, that uh, road and rail are used together, many a times you have seen road and air are used together many a time you have seen that rail and water has been used together. So, you see that we have combination of uh, different modes of transportation which are used to make the transportation system more effective and at the same time cost uh, sensitive also. So, what type of mode of transportation you want to use that is also a strategic decision. Then development of proper information system for your organization. That is also a very important strategic decision. You need to see that uh, the information system should be robust and uh, this information system should be able to handle the requirement of your supply chain system. So, putting lot of emphasis on the information system because companies like Walmart, the success of these companies are basically attributed towards their information systems. The investment, the continuous upgradation of their IS, which company like uh, Walmart are doing, that is uh, one of the key component in the success of these organizations. So, putting lot of emphasis on using the latest information systems, latest network across the supply chain is also very, very important for the success of the supply chain and it is also a type of strategic decision. So, finally, we can say that uh, supply chain design must support the strategic objectives of your organization. So, strategic objectives of the organization can be supported only by the supply chain strategy. And then supply chain design decisions are the long term decisions and it is very expensive, it is very costly to change these decisions. So, normally top management must be very, very careful in selecting the supply chain strategy, supply chain structure and all these things and uh, as we have discussed that the current scenario is full of uncertainties. It is highly volatile and uh, therefore, it becomes very, very important for us to design our supply chain in such a way which can take care of the modern requirement. So, we close this lecture at this point of supply chain strategy. The other two phases of supply chain decision making we will discuss in our lecture number 4. Thank you very much.